Welcome to Behind the Headlines with the Notre Dame Alumni Association. I'm Mandy Kanukin. I'm the Alumni Education Program Director here at Notre Dame. And I'm here with Dr. Patrick Winsing, the Assistant Professor of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering, to talk about something that is trending this week, robots. It's National Robotics Week, and Dr. Winsing is our resident robotic expert. He works with exoskeletons that help patients in rehabilitation. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Winsing. Thanks, Mandy. It's a pleasure to be here. So can you tell us a little bit about National Robotics Week? It just started a couple of days ago. Why is this so important? We've been using robots for, for over 50 years in the U.S. It's mostly been on the assembly line where we have you know, hulking robots that are strong enough to, to lift an automobile. These are not robots that you want to get near or around. Uh, and over the past number of years, there's been a, a, a robot revolution of sorts, where we're seeing an entirely different class of robots that is, you know, that's mobile. It's not bolted to the floor. They're out in the real world amongst us and collaborating with us. We see this in driverless cars, drones, and other technologies, where robots are starting to revolutionize the physical world similar to how computers revolutionized the digital world in years past. And the United States has really been at the forefront of this revolution, so National Robotics Week is our chance to, to celebrate that. It's also our chance to encourage students of all ages to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics so that we can stay at the forefront of this field. So we hear stories about robots and how they're going to take over the world and not necessarily in a good way. Mm -hmm. How are robots actually being used as a force for good in the world? Yeah, so there, there are a lot of doom and gloom predictions out there regarding the, the future implications of robot technologies and I, I personally find them to be a bit overblown. Uh, for instance, robotics has a bad rap when it comes to, to jobs, that the story that we hear is often that robots are taking people's jobs. It's either a job for a robot or a human. And, and that's really just not the case anymore. That the future of work is really how robots and humans can cooperate effectively to be more efficient than either could have been by themselves. Um, for instance, in manufacturing, around 2000, we started to see a number of jobs go overseas to, to China, for instance. Uh, however, over the past eight years or so, We've seen over half a million new jobs in the manufacturing sector in the U.S., and this has been correlated with a rapid increase in the use of robots in our factories. There's more robots in our factories today than there ever were before, and it only continues to rise. Uh, we see companies, as a result, like Apple and Lenovo and Tesla, building new factories in the U.S. This kind of shift in work is seen in other industries as well. For instance, in the medical industry, there are robots in our hospitals now that will deliver medicine and food so that nurses can focus on what it means to be a nurse, and that's helping people. So I think we see this trend kind of broadly, that, that robots shift work, but transition it to more meaningful work. So speaking of, speaking of meaningful work, we just saw a press release come from the mm -hmm. university today about your work. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your research in robotics? Yes, so in my lab we work on building legged robots and assistive exoskeletons. So the story that came out today was uh, regarding our work with a company called Exobionics that builds exoskeletons for people recovering from spinal cord injury. So maybe let me give a bit of context to what an exoskeleton actually is. I think the exoskeletons that most of our viewers would be familiar with would be ones like the suit that Robert Downey Jr. wears uh, as Iron Man on the Hollywood big screen. This is a, a device that he wears on his body that has a number of sensors and actuators to amplify his human capabilities. I think many of us would love to have one of these suits so that we could accomplish unimaginable feats, like flying to the grocery store to get our groceries. Uh, in our research, we're working with people that are recovering from spinal cord injury. And for these individuals, the unimaginable feats might be things that we take for, for granted, like the ability to walk on your own. So we've partnered with this company, Exobionics in California, that specializes in exoskeletons for uh, spinal cord injury recovery. These are devices that are for the lower body, so it's a suit that, that covers your, your trunk and your legs. 
and it has motors and actuators, just like Robert Downey Jr.'s suit. Um, and even if you've had one of these injuries, and, and maybe you, have, uh, you don't have full control over your limbs, the suit is strong enough to help you stand up. It's strong enough to help move your limbs through a gait so that you can walk under control of the exoskeleton. But there's an amazing thing that happens for some of these individuals as they go through rehabilitation. And then it's that over time, the exoskeleton does less and less work, and the patient becomes more and more in control of their own movement. And for some of these individuals that were previously confined to a wheel wheelchair, they can walk on their own again. Uh, however, these technologies aren't at the stake that we see on the big screen. That when Robert Downey Jr. wants to fly, he just he puts his arms back and pushes them to the ground, and the suit just understands. That means he wants to fly. But in the real world, it's really hard for these devices to know what the operator wants to do. And so that's where our research is at. Uh, we're working to pick up on some of the clues in the ways that the operator moves so that we can better assist them through their gait. This is going to enable patients to feel more in control of their own rehabilitation, to make them feel empowered as they take more steps per session and improve their rehabilitation outcomes. It's a project that we just got started in September and, and one that I'm really excited about. Fantastic. So you did come here just this last fall to Notre mm -hmm. Dame, um, and you came from MIT. Mm -hmm. why, why Notre Dame? Why did you come to the University of Notre Dame to do your work? So when I visited campus, it just really impressed me. Uh, the campus is, is beautiful. It's, it's second to none. Everyone here is so kind um, and, and collegial. The department and the College of Engineering really got behind my research agenda in supporting it. Actually, we'll be opening a, a new research lab down in the basement of this building just next week, where my group will be building new legged robots and working on these challenges for rehabilitative exoskeletons. Um, and so that's been great. They were really supportive before I signed on the dotted line and continue to be really supportive now that I'm here. Uh, one of the other things has been the, that attracted me was the students, that I really love teaching. And I looked forward to the ability to, to work with the brilliant undergrads and, and graduates that we have here. Um, and it's something that I really enjoyed when I taught my class, my first class last semester. Uh, I guess on a personal note, I grew up on the east side of Cleveland, uh, part of an Irish Catholic family. So Notre Dame has really always represented a, a pillar of academic excellence. So it's been really meaningful uh, for my family and, and for me to uh, have the chance to contribute to the, the legacy of this place. It's, it's just good to be here. We're excited to have you here, and I would like a personal guarantee that we can come back and do something similar once you've got that lab going and we can see these robots in person. Deal. Thank you for joining us today for Behind the Headlines. Thanks, Mandy.